Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? Is it working? I'm never sure if it's working. Oh, there we go. Cool, I can see something now. Hi. <laughs> I'm trying a different um, camera position because I've got a new monitor. Let's see how that goes, eh? I was also trying the camera that was built into the monitor, but it was it was flickering like crazy. I'm gonna have to buy a camera, aren't I? That's quite annoying. I'm using my phone at the moment, which works quite well, but I don't. It's annoying. I like saying it's there all the time. Ugh. Computers are bad. Anyway, um, what are we gonna do? It's nearly Christmas, so I'm wearing my Christmas jumper, and we're gonna do some programming. So someone in um, Discord said it would be good to have a paste bin to share bits of code. And yes, that's true. And I actually want to have a, a playground. I want to take... Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I want to take this, the Gleam Tour thingy, Bobby. And then I would like to... How do I select things in Novi? Um, I'd like to sort of like take this and remove all the lesson -y stuff and uh, just have like the editor window and the results and maybe the ability to see what it compiles to maybe, maybe. And then somewhere there'll be a big save button and you go and it will, uh, yeah, save it somewhere. And I want to build the somewhere now, I think. Hello. Or like something approaching the somewhere. Today's music again is uh, the soundtrack to Unreal Tournament 1999 because I am living in the past. And yeah, we already we already got one web app deployed, um, and that is the package index. So, yeah, I think we should just add it to the package index. Why not? Wrong window. Hello, everyone. Oh, you're unwell. Get well soon. Yes, that is a Christmas jumper. It's not just a Christmas jumper, it's a Greg's Christmas jumper. <laughs> it's nearly Christmas. I hope you're celebrating as well. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. <clears throat> so, how does this thing work? Oh! My editor's never done that before. I don't know what that was. I don't think that was... Does it do that every time? No. <laughs> Hello, welcome. welcome. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not playing the music because I'm terrified of copyright stuff. But um, soundtrack to Unreal Tournament 1999 is very good, and possibly the best track. Orgon Destruction has just come. So nice. So thinking about storage, oh, this, is it doing that? This side? Um, <clears throat> I, need to, I, need, I need a proper lighting setup as well, I don't know. If I'm gonna do this more often. Anyway, so storage, if we're gonna be a paste bin, it means people could just like store arbitrary amounts of data. A bit rubbish. I don't super want everyone to, to use me as a database. I don't want to pay for it. So, I don't know if you've, um, if you've ever looked at uh, Rust play Playground. There one. I wonder if I can find... Do, 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 do. Um... 
Chat, there we go. <clears throat> they upload everything um, as a guest. I think it's really cute. <laughs> so it's it's Microsoft's problem. We don't need to we don't need to store anything. Microsoft can pay for all of it. So yeah, let's just do that. Let's just copy exactly what they what they do here. I wonder how they do it. Uh, get hub guest. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um. <clears throat> Why'd you just create a guest? Create a guest. Thing? Oh no, I'm in the way. Way. <laughs> mm, there you go. Maybe I should be small there. Be slightly off screen. Um. It needs an API token, which has rate limits. Yeah, it does, but I don't think it's going to be, I don't think we're going to be generating vast quantities of, of that. And I'd much rather hit the GitHub API rate limit than to suddenly discover that I've got, um, you know, I've run, oh, I've either run out of disk space and the whole service has gone down, or I've got like hundreds, um, you know, hundreds of gigs of stuff that I'm paying for. I could expire things, but I don't really want to expire things. I would like it to stay forever. Um, yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice for things to stay around forever, so that you know, if you if people reference it in forum posts and stuff, then in like five years time, you can still view the code that was shared. I mean, I presume the Rust guys are just using a normal API key as well. I wonder if we could find out. Reasons for avoiding a repo like the Rust book. Maybe I'm not understanding the requirements, but I was uh, listening. But if I was listening right, this is for the language tour. Um, no, this is not for the language tour. It's going to be something like the lang. Well, I want to have a playground, which is basically the language tour, but without the. Um, it's yeah, it's like the language tour, but minus all the like learning content it's just like hey you can you can edit stuff you can share things which is you know i think what people are going to want a lot of the time i'm not sure where we'd publish publicize it though but we can worry about it later let's just make some nuts and bolts first <clears throat> have you seen a similar site with the text comments is all encoded in the url yeah i've seen that that's what the playground does but the um you also get horrendous. Maybe that's the right thing to do. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's boring. <laughs> um, if we're doing that, this has just become another CSS stream. <laughs> and everyone liked watching me fail to do CSS last time around. But, um, what's the most compact? Um, Compact string. Um, this is not the right thing, is it? How do I how do I describe this? This, this I don't think I've ever got any useful information from this website ever. Hello. Script playground TypeScript playground does this apparently. So how do I run it? Okay. Uh. How do you share it? Oh no, that's export share. So what is that? What is this? How are they doing that?
Is it this? Is it just base 64? I mean, it's a very small amount of text there, isn't it? So. Yeah, okay. So we just we just have really long URLs. What is this then? <clears throat> it's slower and less compact. That doesn't sound like what we want, is it? Alternative to base. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, what am I? What should I be searching for here? Because I don't. I want to. Uh, yeah, is something that's specialized for, um, you know, actual Unicode going to do better here? ASCII eighty eighty five. Oh yeah, that does make more sense, doesn't it? <clears throat> Base eighty eighty five. Okay. Do we have like functions for that? Cool. Z85. Anyway. Hmm, yeah, we've got like particularly 64. Let's do this. Um, okay, that's how we're doing, isn't it? Gosh, this is old, 10 years ago. Oh, that looks awful. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it would be nice if we could um all this rubbish. You can use my implementation. I don't like any of this. This is all like pulling in more jazz than I want to. Yeah. I mean, like, the easy thing to do is just do base 64. How much, how much do we care about how long the URLs are, really? Is there a limit? How long can a... Really? I was hoping I'd just get to make a web app, but no, I'm learning things about browsers I don't care about. Um. Uh, 
That's a pretty big number. How long queries? Uh, browser. Then the kids use um, chat GPT for this. Maybe that's what I should be doing. Ooh, max URL bytes. Okay. 80K bytes. Sounds right. None of these seem like particularly authoritative. Mm -mm -mm. These are all really old. How does Google work? Uh... <clears throat> okay. That's a huge difference between them. I wonder if I can just find the source code for this. Oh, not the kind of help I wanted. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. It's not open source. That is so rubbish. How how really very disappointing. Microsoft is the bad guy. What's a zappy playground? Okay. Let's not do any of that then. Oops, sorry about that. There's a repo called TypeScript Playground Gist Proxy API. I mean, the gist, the, the, like the gist thing's really trivial. Like, but it, it is worse if, if it's okay to embed all the content in the URL, there's a sensible way to do that. that isn't gonna cause us any problems. That is a better solution than um, storing it in a database somewhere. It just like, the, but the storing the database thing is fun to make. Okay, so. What's that URL look like? Oops. Very strictly forward. Let's see if it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Base 64. Not just that, then. What are they doing then? The base ITK? Oh, look at the website. Isn't that gorgeous? Hmm. How does this work? Decode. Invalid character W. Oh, it's exciting. Maybe not then. What is it? Is there, where we can find out. Hmm. So what do we do, guys? 
What's the answer? Do we just base 64? That seems kind of rubbish. What is the what does the um existing playground do? So it has a share button somewhere. Might that be? Uh, oh, come on, really? Sorry, folks, I'm going to have to do this in a different browser. This then. So good. Okay. In the old one, he's using. Oops. This thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I like this kind of readme. That's what the TypeScript Playground uses too. Awesome. Okay. Okay, let's do that. We can just tolerate having horrendously long URLs. That's fine, right? How big is it? Can you just like put the entire thing in a... Can I vendor the whole thing? Is it like one file? No, it's not one file. Uh... Hey, JavaScript people, can I just like pull it from, um... can I just like pull it from a CDN? Is that a thing? Okay. That looks like a that looks like a very reasonable amount of code to me. Okay, so let's do that. Um, how are we gonna do this? Do we do? Should it be a page on the in the language tool? Like we just make another page. Hello, welcome. How old are you, Louis? Says anonymous. That is um, that's ominous. <laughs> uh, I am 33. Old enough that my knees don't work. Um, what do we think? Is this a new project or is this just going in the language tool? Maybe let's just do it in the language tool. That's probably the easiest way, right? Mm, but the language tool is all written in JavaScript. That's not quite so fun. Is this just going to turn into another... Um, CSS writing challenge. I was curious, the way you use the web. Well, I'm not logged into anything at the moment. I'm not using my browser, so. I t and I tend, I, I, I generally am not stumbling around trying to find, um, you know, I generally know the answers to the questions already. Not like Googling random facts about browsers and things. Uh, good, so I want to keep this one and that one. Um, good. Let's do something. So. What shall we do? I will make a Glean version of LZ string for fun. That's really cool. Definitely do that. So. does this all work then, eh? Because if we look at, um, uh, mm, this is annoying because I've, mm. Mm -mm. I don't have a good 
way to move forward with this, right? Because I don't want to particularly be just be doing a stream of writing JavaScript and HTML, but like this looks like it is going to be entirely a very small amount of JavaScript and then the rest is going to be HTML. <laughs> who, who was it who pointed out that I didn't need to make the web application that I wanted to make? Because you've really scuppered my stream. <laughs> is this not actually live? No, it is. It is live. I'm just wearing a Christmas jumper. <laughs> it's only three. It's only three whole seasons until Christmas. Yeah. HTML makes maybe I really like HTML Z. Have you seen that? This is like super clever. It's, so I've used HTML a lot. Actually, let's start by looking at HTML. Can't remember the name of the place. HTML. This one here, right? So, have you ever read the source code for it? Like, I really like it. It's a really nice tool to use, but. Like it's kind of, it's kind of monstrous. Like it's quite convoluted in the way it works, and it's it's full of stuff like this. You know, remove when Internet Explorer goes away, and then if you use it on huge pages like we were, I, I should say that I, I'm doing the kind of complaining one does um, when someone has used something a lot um, and likes it enough to have learned all the problems but like yeah and using it in very large pages we just kept having like strange performance problems mostly coming from internet explorer support doing things that you just don't need to do anymore and then so naturally we like opened it up and looked inside and see what's going on and like wow it's not it's not easy to to work out what's going on in here and like it doesn't actually do that much and it's quite a lot of code so I like I like the like general philosophy of the tool, but I don't think the tool itself is like a particularly good example of like it as a thing. And then someone showed someone showed me this. I think it was like um, on lobsters or something. It's amazing. Like it does it does a lot of the what I want from it does the basics of what I want from HTMX. And where is it? Can we see the whole thing? Like that is the entire library. It's not even a library, like that's the whole snippet. It's so clever. It doesn't even do fetch. It's just like, here's an iframe and you can target it. And it like puts things into wherever you set the ID. It's absolutely brilliant. No, I don't, um, I thought HTMX was a meme. Um, no, no, it's not. It's, uh, it's just someone using the web platform in a smart way instead of, um, why is it in an iframe? Okay, so here's why. So like, um, iframes are pretty cool. Um, iframes, you can have a link and you can set a, oh, let's, let's find an example. Tabs, here we go. So, uh, can you do one without target base, please? No, you're gonna put that on everyone, are you? Okay, that's very annoying. Okay, so you can have a link and you can put like target and then the name of an iframe on it. And then rather than like loading the entire, rather than like loading that into the entire page, it loads it into an iframe. Cool. So that's a way of doing like asynchronous requests um, without using any JavaScript. Now, if you look at the little iframe they've got here, so this is one, this is the one they're targeting. It has an onload handler and it says, um, get all the get all the content from what does it say? It says look at the document, find the um, the element that has the ID that is set here, and then replace it with the content of this iframe. Oh, that's so clever! That's so clever! Look at that! That's the entire thing. Is brilliant, absolutely inspired, and like that, that can replace HTMX for like a lot of users. That's quite a lot of code gone. When will Internet Explorer be removed? Now that's the eternal question. I was pretty sure it was, but uh, no, apparently not. 
I do think that HTMX is apparently working on a replacement. Yeah, which is needed, really. Data Star is a. I haven't heard of that. Data Star. Uh, nope, I'm going to have to put some more words on that. I Java screw it. This one? TypeScript Hypermedia? Not very popular. Assuming I've got the right one here. Um, mm -mm. Similar to Alpine JS. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes me think they're already moving slightly out of. Like they're doing more than I want. I base. I think that. Um. I. I do genuinely think that the whole like HTML, HTMZ, HTMX thing should be in the browser. Like there should be some attributes to say, this link, this anchor loads content into that element. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like all the Alpine state stuff. I don't want state. I just want like a declarative good DOM that can do. That can load things in the same way that iframes load things, but not use iframes. So the only one thing, and they've got extensions now. So the only the only one that I really wanted was um, no history. So like by default, if you load into an iframe and then you hit back, it will like change the content that the iframe changed. Um. Which, like, for tabs, that's fine. Like, oh, like, there we go. We changed tabs a few times. Like, that works really well. But it doesn't change the URL. So if you hit refresh, it goes to the wrong place. And if you're doing something like a form, can we find a form somewhere? Uh, back to main page. Greeting. What's your name? Louis. Oh, go down a bit. Louis. Hello, Louis. What's your name? Um, so if we press back now, it just changes all that form did, which is not, that's not what, um, I don't think that's what people expect. But that's okay, because they've got this little, um, where is it? This thing, which fixes it, which is just add those two lines of code. I mean, honestly, yeah. Like, I would like to go back to frame sets, but you know, I want I want a slightly more modern version where it's like the same document. I just want to be able to do like asynchronous forms without huge quantities of JavaScript. HTML, hey, I think, is the one. I've I've not used it for anything serious yet, but I'm I'm very impressed with it. <clears throat> Oh, why does it keep doing that? What do we do now? What's the solution? Haley talked me out of writing my web application. I don't want to do I don't want to do CSS and JavaScript. What should I make? Any suggestions, anyone? I have an instinctual fear of iframes due to some bad history. Ooh, what's going on? Um, Andy asks, are we making a JavaScript app with Gleam? So what I was originally going to do was make a, um, a HTTP service, maybe JSON, maybe form data, maybe neither of those things, maybe just a string, which would, you could give it some code, and then it would store it in GitHub guests, and then that would be the backing for a Gleam Playground. Um, and then someone pointed out, you can just put the data in the URL. Man, actually a good idea. I kind of didn't want to do that because the URL is really long and it looks ugly, but um, actually that's a silly reason, to be honest. Um, how about an extension to the package site to scan for squatted packets? That's a really interesting idea. How would we do that? This is a Greg's themed Christmas jumper. Well spotted. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearly Christmas. Um, that would be interesting, I suppose. <clears throat> uh, 
Another thing I quite want to see is like see the um the amount like the amount of packages. Um like the amount of packages over time plotted into a graph. That's another thing that we could do with the package index that I'd be quite interested in. Maybe let's try and do that. How would we do that? This is the wrong place. Um, how would you determine a squatted package? Um, I, a package um, has one version and only has a main function and doesn't do anything. Like, I'm sure there's a bunch of heuristics we could use. Heuristics, rather. Wicked. Oh, okay. So... Cumulative frequency. Is that a thing we can do? Hmm. I think. Oh. Oh. Sorry, folks. I've. 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 I've since opened my editor, but um, we couldn't see it. Sorry, everyone. So what do we need to do? We need to know the inserted in hexa. Yeah, okay. So that is a, that's a Unix timestamp. How do we convert that in SQLite into um, date? Good. How do you change the layout in Secure Light? Okay. That'll do. Hmm, a bunch of stuff. So... Ooh. Um.
So, where does this stuff live again? How, I can't remember this app works. There's a directory called SQL. That's probably what we want, isn't it? SQL, not source. And we call this um, um, new package. Oops, what happened there? What's wrong with my um, port complete? Does hex have any Git information? You could compare um, init publish time short dist. Does hex have any? Uh, does hex have any Git information? If we could somehow compare init to publish time, um, in indicator, not reliably so, no. And also, like you could be working on a project for ages, and then it just init and publish straight away, and that that would be fine. to be quite fun so how do we chart this has anyone got any recommendations for like a charting library we can just pull in from a cdn somewhere hmm <laughs> i appreciate the hello joe example takes all for our clean um have you seen what happens when i open my editor <laughs> hello joe god bless him Joe's the dude. Actually, there's at least two really awesome Joes in the in the um, in the Beam world. One of them is in chat right now. Cool. So, what have we got here? We got an SQL query. Query. Let's. Um, <clears throat> how does this work? I think I can do this. And that's generated for me a a new function. So let's do something with that function. Um, where, how does this app work? Index, that's the right place to have it. Hey Ryan, how's it going? So, something that uses, ah, here we go. Let's use this as a base. Um, I can't remember what I called the SQL thing. New package count. What does the cogen step do? Um, it's kind of rubbish. I'll show you. Uh, so it finds all of the SQL files inside um, the SQL directory. And then it generates a module that imports all the dependencies to make um, to make um, uh, what am I saying to to make um, use SQLite. Why am I struggling to say that to use SQLite? And then for each one, it generates a um, function which takes all the expected things and moves some boilerplate. For I was looking for you on Twitch. I have not worked out how to do Twitch yet, and any time I've got some energy for streaming, I'm just like, ah, I can't be bothered. I'll just like, I just, I'll go on the one that's already set up. I should, I should figure it out. I really should. I think more people watch Twitch than YouTube, but I, I, just, I watch videos all day, so I just figured, yeah, I'll just use that one. Well, they invited me to become a, I don't know the word. Partner? Is it a partner? I don't know. They were like, you should monetize your your thing. Multiple people have watched you code badly <laughs> in the last few days, so you should you should put adverts on it. I'm like, oh, okay. How are you doing that tree sitter animation? This thing. I honestly couldn't tell you. It's something in Lazy Vim. Don't know how to configure Vim. 
I used to know, but then I just... Is it, for some reason, I suddenly had a lot less free time when it came to computers, and I have to use, like, yeah. I used to be one of those people who, like, configure Linux for hours and hours and hours and have my own custom thing, but not anymore. Things are very different now. I just work on, on Gloom. Anyway, there you go. So it, so it generates this um, generated module here. So if we find day there you go here's the here's our generated function so what do we think it's going to return it's going to return a list of <clears throat> um do we bother to have the day do we bother to have a, a, a actual structure or we just say string ends let's just do that so Got a DB. I need that. Rams. Okay. We have dynamic import. YouTube chat is very delayed compared to Twitch, so interacting with stream is more awkward. Interesting. Unless you switch from top chat to live chat, you don't even see the messages at all. That's rubbish. Why do they do that? I've got, I've, I've set it to ultra, um, ultra low latency in the settings, and I've no idea if it does anything. <laughs> Are you still working on the pastebin or something else? I'm working on something else now because um, I don't want to write HTML and CSS really badly on stream like I did last time because that's boring. I'd much rather do the thing that I'm okay at. Which this Gleam thing, I hear it's all right. I hear it's pretty cool. I hear it's really good and you should use it. Cool, so um, let's make a decoder. Uh, that, that. Wow, that's pretty, that's what I want. Thank you, Copilot. That was easy. So, what's this app called? This is the um, packages. Does Copilot play nicely with Gleam? Yeah, I find it works really well. I mean, it think, if you start with an empty file, it thinks it's Rust, which is a that's okay. Oh, I've already imported. Have I got a list? I call. Okay. Fonts. No, that's how you spell it. Yay! Data. How exciting. Is it in the right order? Yes. I think so. Um, oh, it's out of date though. Very out of date. What do I sync? There we go. Awesome. Um, Gleam is dope. Yeah, thank you. Dylan's been um, really supportive. He's been he's been awesome. Lovely guy. I've been watching some of his streams as well. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't really understand what like is he working on something else at the same time because he always like goes he always stops for a few minutes and, and does something on his laptop which I get a bit confused by yeah cool dude um I did not know you're the guy who made the language I am 
Sorry to break. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> yeah, this the theme I'm using is uh, Dusk Fox, I think. Do you have OTP and Gleam? Yeah, you can either use the Erlang one, or if you want it to be type safe, maybe a bit easier to use from Gleam, we've got a package called Gleam OTP. Nice. Work to Versal. That's a, that's a really cool place to work. Although I do think that Versal, the name is rubbish. It sounds like a cleaning product to me. Get, get stains out with Versal. Is there something similar to Phoenix Gen Auth in Gleam? There's not, but I want to make that soon. In part because um, Mark in the Discord wants that for, for a project he's got. Oh, okay, so what should we do with this, this information? We can like put it in some HTML somewhere. That'd be nice. Um, I, yeah, let's just do that. Let's, and then we'll worry about making a chart later. So let's get rid of this counts thing. And web, yep, web router. Um, what should we call this? Um, that's that's kind of boring. Um, <laughs> Oops. You do not quite what I wanted. Um, package, package count per day. <clears throat> it said pay. Okay, here we go. Is there like a layout? Uh, how does this work? Okay, so there's a header. What is this made with? Oh, it's this thing. Ah, it's luster. <laughs> Ryan probably wants you to stream on Twitch so he can spam the Elixir remote in chat. That sounds great. You can spam that all day. Um, very hyped about Gleam. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. That's really nice to hear. Thank you so much. How come you don't support function overloading? Um, so it doesn't, a few reasons. It makes um, your type system significantly more complicated. So I'll give you an example. So imagine you've got a function called add. I did, I did this in the last one as well, so I'm going to try and keep it. Oh, thinks we're doing rust. Oh, no, we're not doing rust. Stop it, bad copilot. Oh. Is that a bug? Look, there's, it's, hmm. Going on here? Why is it? Why is there a is there a di diagnostic there? Can you zoom in your code a little bit? Oh yeah, it looks tiny, doesn't it? We try and do that. Got a. Oh wait, no, no, no! I can do it. I can do it in a different. Make this smaller. Ooh, there we go. Is that okay? Or do you want a bit bigger? Mm. 
Anyway, so here's my example. Um, you could imagine uh, that with overloading, you can do this. Yeah, that's it. Well, that makes sense. That that's all pretty simple. Like it's a bit more complicated to implement that in the type type checker, but like it, it it's doable. Um, the confusing thing comes here. Um, what's the type of what is the type of of um, X now? Yeah, what is that like? You need you'd need some kind of like union. Like you'd even need to ban that, or you'd need to say that it is actually not an int function and a float function, but like int or float and int float. And then that doesn't really work because you need to like make sure both arguments are the same. Yeah, it's just really complicated. Like, and the only thing you get out of it is that you don't have to do that. That's not a good trade of complexity, I think. Oh, okay. So I see what the problem is. So like for some reason, it's not clearing diagnostics um, when you're outside of a project. Okay. That is a bug on the main branch of Glint. Um, one, this is one area I find Zig comp time stuff really amazing for developer experience. Yeah, but it kind of destroys um, static analysis, which is kind of what Gleam is all about. Okay. How locked down is the syntax? Very locked down. We have been doing... Um, yeah, that suggestions about core syntax are like four years ago. It is way too late for that now. Right, where am I doing? So, team picker, search term. Oh, there is, oh. Interesting. What, why does this layout thing not include this? Surely that is the layout. Is it used by somewhere else? No, there's only one instance of layout, so shouldn't that go in there? This is wrong. Okay, so I think layout should take that, and you should be able to put in the search. Oops. Clumsy, clumsy, clumsy. Where does content go? Broken. Oops. <clears throat> this looks way messier than JS, no offense. What, what on earth does that mean? What is, what is messier? <laughs> oh dear. Um, first time seeing Gleam in action looks very clean. Oh, we've got back to back clean and messy. <laughs> the duality of man indeed, yes. <laughs> Can we see if this still works then? No, because the stats thing I said exists doesn't. Let's put also this string builder thing inside the inside the layer as well. Nice. Stats as well.
How does how does Luster work? HTML dot Beauty is in the eye of whatever lint you're using. That is beautiful. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. Um, how does the message passing syntax look like? I couldn't find anything in the docs. There isn't a message passing syntax. It's all functions. We don't have, um, we don't have any special syntax for England. Uh, is it Ruby? I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to. The code is uh, Gleam. Messy always means this looks different than what I'm used to. I do genuinely think that is what most uh, most time programmers complain about stuff. I do think that is mostly what they mean. Nice. Oh no! I remember what's in. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I think I need to load a secrets file. Oh, it's a hex API key. That's. What it is. Let's hope I don't. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Show you guys the other screen in case I accidentally print something. Okay. It's fine. Oops. 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 There we go. Right. Let's try this again. Nice. Hey, how exciting. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. <clears throat> that's slightly bigger than I wanted it to be, but that's good. Good, 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 good. Those are the counts. Oops, what have I done there? Um, your route should be internet points. You are so right, it really should be. Let's, let's do that right now. Do, 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 do. do you think Gleam might be getting something similar to NX, which runs a subset of Elixir on the GPU? Uh, we could also take advantage of type safety of LLMs and such. Uh, maybe one day. I, I don't know anything about machine learning, really, so I'm not the person to do that. I'm a weirded out about uh, pipes having two modes. Does it not make reading card, reading code a bit hard? I've not written much yet. I have some experience in Elixir. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Give an example, and then I'll, I'll try and figure out an answer. People like pipes, and I don't think any of the um, like we have a bunch of things that people do, which I think can make code harder to read. Piping is not one I've seen people overdo too much. Except for like some people pipe from or into case, which looks very strange. By doing some, by carrying functions, it's a bit complicated for me. <clears throat> How would two processes communicate? By calling functions called things like send and receive. <clears throat> What's Gleam? Gleam is a, uh, a statically typed functional programming language. Or as the website says, it is a... Oh, let's just look, let's look at the website. Look at the lovely website. 
Gleam is a friendly language for building type safe systems that scale. And it's got this little cutie. Oh, isn't she great? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, it's really good. I, I think Gleam is fantastic. Who, whoever made it knows what they're doing. You should really check it out. Cool. So let's put this information into the page in some useful way. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Go. Oh. <clears throat> Are you making a website? Um, I'm adding some stats to an existing website. So here, the Gleam, oh, let's use the real one. Here is the Gleam package site. So if you say like, I wanna find a HTML package, you can search for that and you can see all the ones that are relating to HTML. Gosh, there's quite a lot of HTML stuff. Um, I've just, I like, I like numbers and, and graphs and things. They make me feel like something's happening. So I want to see um, I want to see how the number of packages in, is increasing over time. I'm going to make a chart for that. Oh gosh, sorry. Um, what's this though? I heard of this before. Hmm, what does that mean? Oh wow, is this like a GUI framework? adjust my monitor position stuff i feel like i'm like leaning over a bit and make my neck sore maybe if i raise the microphone i'll start doing that there we go great gui boxes in bash scripts oh oh wow that looks really useful that looks fantastically useful oh what a neat package. I love this. There's like so many people doing Gleam at the moment that I, I, every day I can open the packages site and I find a new. Anyway. So um, I want to get data into the page. How do I do that? Let's put it inside some G, some Java scripts. Do I have list? I do have list. So uh, I want JSON. That's not quite what I want, mate. That is, in fact, um, the wrong language. Are you using Vim? I'm using NeoVim. Yes, I am. I've never written anything on the Beam family, and I'm interested in Gleam. It looks nice to write and read. Do you have any suggestions for what type of project to write to get my hands dirty a bit? Uh, so I, I really strongly believe that the best projects are... Um, whatever you're excited by. That's the correct thing. Oh, it's not called list, is it? It's called array. But yeah, like what, whatever, whatever you like, that's the thing you should be doing. Has the LSP received an update? It seems way better than before. Um, no. I've done some things to improve performance on weak machines, but it doesn't my machine's powerful, so it doesn't make any difference to me. That's pretty much what it's always been. What am I doing? Um, uh, so the first item is the date. It's going to be a string. String to string, JSON to string. Oops. Oops. Very good at this. There we go. Um, which would be. Oh no, this is just wrong. Hold on, let me try this again. Uh, 
करवाऊंगा Unless this layout thing took a collection. Haley, are you still here? Can is there a fragment thing in, in Luster? Can I like use two elements in the place of one? Are you super stoked that the JSON module is coming to Erlang in OTP 27? I am so hyped for that. The reason that I'm hyped for that is that I maintain maybe it's not right now. Maybe it, I don't know. There's a okay. I maintain what might be the fastest um, pure Erlang JSON parser. Um, and I don't want to. Because <laughs> um, it was a real pain in the ass to make. So I really love the idea of the core team having a JSON parser um, that's much, much faster and better than mine. And um, yeah, then, I, then, you know, then we don't have to compile it because it's going to be pre-compiled and come with the distribution. It's going to be great. Be a web dev, shove it in a shove it in a div. I'm gonna shove it in a script tag. Thank you very much. Is that true? Maybe I'm not gonna do that. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna be really nice. What is a Gleam? Gleam is a is a functional programming language. It's really good. You should try it. Speaking as a completely impartial bystander, Gleam is amazing. Possibly the best thing ever. You should use it. Um, I am 100% guaranteed not to be biased. Nice. Uh, what am I doing? Can you provide a brace tutorial? I can. Go to tor.gleam.run and there is a not very basic tutorial. It covers everything. It's very good. Is it useful web development? Yes, it is. I'm doing some web development with it right now. Um, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Ooh, can it guess what? I don't want, that's not. That, oh, that does make sense, actually, doesn't it? Yeah. So can I do... No, okay. I have to go look at the docs for the luster. Uh, Haley's going to get mad at me. Cause... No. No, I guess not. Hey, Louis, how are you doing? I'm doing really good, except I don't remember how to use Luster. Well, I never, I've never really learned. <laughs> this is awesome, but um, I just don't spend enough time doing web to remember all the APIs. Haley, where are you? I need to know the um, I need to know the thing. Although I think I'm still using three, to be honest. What if I look inside Element? There might be something here. Pick. Uh, no, I don't think any of these things do it would do what I want. Ah, there is an okay. Um, there is an issue of fragment. Still no PR. Got it. Thank you very much. Someone should do that. Not me though. I'm not gonna do it. It's time to add JSX into Gleam. You can come up with a good design. We can totally do it. It's got to be able to do more than just give us a different syntax, though. That is not a good use of complexity. If you add a new feature, you've got to enable new things. You've got to get more powerful, eh? And a slightly different syntax is not very satisfying. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I guess like some developers will probably find it um, more appealing and more likely to try out the language. Yeah, that's nice. Whoa. 
Whoa, Opalu, you've you've gone a bit wild there. Sure, let's try it. Okay, let's run the server and see what that looks like, eh? What's your opinion on GitHub Copilot? It's yes, fine. It's sometimes it's sometimes useful. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Nice. That's like all the data I want. So who knows a good charting library? Because I sure don't. I don't use Copilot. It dampens your ability to think about the syntax and the problem you want to solve. I'm not sure it's good enough to do that. Like, it sort of guesses some stuff sometimes. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it really does programming. D three. That's really complicated. What is this? What is the simplest? I remember someone recommended me something. Does it have the word plot? Is that a thing? Plot JS. No. Plotly. That sounds. That might be it. This looks vaguely familiar. Just raw dog uh, SVG. I would love to do that, but I don't know how to. Basic charts. That's what I want, isn't it? Line chart. Uh. Uh. Oh, it's still complicated. Too still I'm confused. How does that work? What are you trying to do? Um, I want to have a cumul I want to make a cumulative frequency um, diagram. Cumulative. Okay. Why doesn't it do it for me? Someone clever, what do I do? We've we've veered outside of Gleam and we're into JavaScript land and I'm I'm lost and scared. <laughs> Chart JS. That's usually the go-to. Chart JS. Oh, it had a funny, funny-looking animation. Ooh. Okay. Don't want animations. Sample. Fine. Um, the, um, the graph is number of packages. Oh no, it's not. It's not even that though, because it's um, it's not even that. I haven't I haven't made it cumulative yet. That's very silly of me. Okay, well I will I w it will be cumulative momentarily, but how do I make a chart? Okay. Okay. Ah, there's just so much stuff here. I want I I want less than that. What's the simplest possible chart thing? Where's the data? It doesn't even show you what the data is. Uh what? What does that mean? This is way too complicated. Would it be better to do an SVG server side? I'd be happy with that. I just don't know how to. Can someone give me an example of an SVG chart? I can just copy that. How simple is this? I mean, this looks this looks more simple. Maybe I'll just try this one. I would make a table. I don't want a table. I want to see the curve. I don't, so I, I'm interested in seeing the, um, I want to see a curve and I don't know how to express that in a way that my brain understands with text. I want to see the, I want to see it go up. 
So, what the CDN? Use a non-JS library. I don't have one. I don't think anyone has made a chart library for... Um, I don't think anyone has made a chart library for... Uh, shucks. Why does it download so many things? Oh, it's just doing mist in the loop. That's quite funny. Um, that, shall we? A script source and that's that. I do a date. Oh, sorry, folks. I've just realized that I'm I've got the wrong thing showing. How do you add data attributes in? in um it'd be nice if these were hmm. is that a thing where's Haley? i really want uh attribute attribute thank you very much Um, what am I calling this? How does Plotly work? Do 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 do. Oh, users IDs, not data attributes. Okay. Oh. That doesn't look good, does it? Where is it? Um, no element with the ID chart exists on this page. Inspector is telling me. How do I put? How do I put the inspector into the page? Okay. <clears throat> why is it? I don't know why that's printing that. Oh, selected element. Anyway, I don't know how. I don't know how Safari. Works. Oops, wrong one again. Ooh, look at chart. Not terrible, I suppose. You, you spotted faster than I did. Yeah, well done. Disco Elysium. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? A beautiful city. What a wonderful place. Isn't it fantastic? I gotta start streaming in the evening. I just get so achy. Oh, that looks nice. I wonder if I give it the dates, it will know what to do with them. Should we try that? Oh, God, my posture is terrible. Show. I don't know what traces are. I've only got one, though. Oh, I can actually just like interpolate the, the, the. Oh, 
I can actually just interpolate in the JSON here, can't I? Uh, or can I? So what I've, I've got to make type scatter. What on earth is that? Yeah, nice game. Sad they had issues in the company. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, I think we're just going to have to keep an eye out for where all those folks, what company they end up at next, and then whatever they make will be equally amazing, I hope. So... Do you think I can just add... Let's just hard code something before I do something overly clever. Go. Let's see what that looks like. Hey, understands dates. That's great. That's pretty good. So. <clears throat> I need to change my JSON, my JSON um, to be something else array so this will be Script. Oh, that's great. Oops. Can you just uh, JSON encode in template? Yes. Great minds think alike. <laughs> that doesn't show me much, really, does it? Hmm. So, do I have a function for. Do I have um, a scan function? Do. Nice. So this is for the hints. I need to make this cumulative. I can do that by saying uh, not this one. That doesn't make sense. Scan from zero. From the accumulate. And let's call it. That's from the total new.
Right, let's see what that looks like. Where is my packages list? This one. Ho 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 ho! That looks good. That looks real good. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow, look at that growth. That's fantastic. And it's not all just V1 as well. Like, that's been growing the whole time. Um, okay, I want to make this wider. I want to, like, not have um, this bit and this bit. Now the line needs to be pink. You are completely correct. That is probably the most important. How do I do that? Uh, color. I don't know. Damn. Someone's going to have to make a pull request for that one. Um, layout. Don't maths me. I'm not going to do some crazy logarithmic stuff. The, the, pur the purpose of this is purely to feel good. <laughs> this is just because it looks cool. Um, should it be a histogram? Yeah, probably, but I don't know how to do that. Someone can tell me how to do that on, in um, Plotly here. Histogram. Oh, look, there is a histogram. 2D histograms. Nice. Type histogram. Let me just find this content thing first and then I can. Cool. Histo. Whoa. Thank you so much, Alex. I copy from. Is that the right color? Is that faff? I've reached a point in my life where I've memorized a hex code. <laughs> I quite like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh, that doesn't look as satisfying though. Why is it like, um, oh, it's doing it by month? No, what's it doing? I don't understand this. I'm going to go back to the line E thing. Scatter. Oh, that looks much better. Oh, yeah. It's, I want to make that line nice and thick. <laughs> um, chunking it could do by day this is by day currently the SQL query um, groups by day that looks so nice do you think you can do different colours like do you think you can do like a dark mode I'll be real like I, I dropped out of university I wasn't very good in school and I don't know maths Maths is hard. It's not like programming languages. They're easy. That that chart looks more aesthetically pleasing to me. 
I, f I feel like I'm getting more data from that, but I don't actually know if that's the case. I'm sorry the chat's so delayed. It says that um, it's on ultra low latency mode. I don't know what that means. Yeah, uh, electrical engineering dropout. That's cool. That was a biology dropout. Biology is, I don't know. Big respect when it does biology, but it's kind of hard. <clears throat> wow, is this like a meeting for uh, former electrical engineers? That was great. I'm well happy with that. Are there any other charts we would want to add? How did you get into functional programming languages? Um, for me, I was employed as a Ruby developer and they've got a module called Enumerable that gives you like filter and folds and map and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, wow, this is the best thing in the, this is the best bit of the whole language. It rules, what is this? And someone's like, oh, it's functional programming. So I was like, oh, I should probably find out what that is. And then it was all downhill from here, really. Teacher training for IT dropout. That's, t being a teacher is, is damn cool. But also really hard, so yeah. Get it. How old am I? I'm 33. When did I stop programming? Um, like seriously when I dropped out of uni. So like 12 years ago, maybe? Something like that. And just do a just do a hell of a lot of it. Um, are there any? I like that we've made a chart. Are there? Other, can I add titles to a chart? That would be cool, wouldn't it? Where is this title? Setting the title. Okay. So layout. Title text. Uh, layout. No, is that right? No, this is wrong. It's going to say title. Um, yay. Are there any other um, charts we'd want to make? Can you interact with this? Oh, you can! <laughs> oh, gosh, I like... Um, I find the I find the browser really satisfying. Like you can do things really easily with it. Look at that. We had one package, and then two packages. Eleven. Wow. Well done, twenty twenty. Big deal. Total downloads. I don't think I have that data. You would need to continuously pull that from Hex. What data do I have? That's a good question. So... Oh, it's like... Uh, I've done... I've pressed something in Vim and I don't know what. Tables? Is that what it's called? Tables? So I've got... I guess I could do release count. That might be interesting as well. Could, yeah, I could do release count. That'd be very similar. Um, any tips if I want to start a program language? Just want to learn. Um, I think... Yeah, okay, it depends what you want to do. There's like a whole bunch of things you can do with making languages and they're all quite fun. I tend to focus a lot on like designing of 
the language and the ecosystem and the tools and that sort of stuff. <clears throat> and if you're interested in that sort of thing, I would say the best thing you can do is not to implement a programming language, but instead to design them and then try and write programs in them. So you would like open your text editor and you would like write in your, your whatever your syntax is that you've just made up and you can't run the code in any way, but then you sit down and go, okay, so how, what would that compile to? Or like how that it's got this feature where it can like implicitly work out which implementation it should use. Okay. So how does it, how does it figure out which implementation it is? What would the compiler do? Um, or, or you go, it, or, or, so, and if you're a compiler, you could even say like, okay, well this compiles into my language can pass to C. I'm going to write the, I'm going to write the code in my language and then I'm going to write the code in C and I'm going to like figure out how I would convert between the two in my head. So like just do everything in your head. Um, we're Vimming now. Has the NeoVim LSP issues been resolved? Um, I mean, it's, it's about the same as it was before. It's getting better. Uh, Going to focus a lot on it this year. Um, an okay, another thing about programming languages that you could do is you might be interested in making runtime systems. Runtime systems are really fun. Oh no, my battery. My, my, I've been told that my camera battery is about to run out. Oh dear, how do I fix this? Mm, 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 mm. Excuse me a second. I've got some cables somewhere. Might be helpful. Okay, let's try not knock over this row. I'm sort of balancing my phone on the back of my monitor, which is a terrible idea. But we're all about terrible ideas here. This is good. If this is loud, sorry about that. I don't know how to tell if it's charging or not. My webcam is my phone. Hmm. I'm, if I if I if I suddenly vanish it's because my webcam's run, my uh, phone's run out of batteries. So the other thing that you could do, um, the the one of the other things you could focus on is um, making runtime systems. That that could be really fun. In which case, it doesn't really matter what your language is like so much. You can just make something fairly simple, like follow along with um, the book from the Ren guy, what it's called now, um, Crafting Interpreters. That's a really good book. And then you could just like play with different memory layouts and I don't know, all that cool stuff. How do you do garbage collection? Maybe you want to implement garbage collectors. That, that could be cool. Crafting Interpreters is fabulous. It's really good. Do, 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 do. Right, so I could do the same thing for releases. Oh, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> yeah, let's get rid of that. How do I? There we go. Okay, cool. So, can I like abstract this into something? Do I want to? How to install the language server when not, if you're not using Mason, you don't need, to, so like the thing is that Gleam comes with a language server. So if you've got Gleam installed on your computer, you have the language server, um, but someone added a Mason package and then somebody, I'm not sure how it works exactly, but some Vim distributions were automatically run installing the Mason package, which would install a second copy of all of Gleam. Um, but that wouldn't be the, it wouldn't necessarily be the same version that you're using. 
So you'd end up with different results in the terminal as you would in your editor, which sucks. Nobody wants that. Um, I'm going to make one more chart because I think that'd be fun. It's going to look exactly the same, I think. Uh... How am I going to do that? Am I... It is bundled. It comes in. It's just one binary and it has everything in it. Cool, so I'm gonna make a stats type and I'll say um, package count. That's not what it's meant to do. Nice try, nice try co-pilot, but not quite. Chart is not in scope here because I called it line. Okay, and so now this is going to complain because <clears throat> to make stats. Mm, not quite. Copilot is like, it could be, well. Could be better though. If you're using external CDNs, you get GDPR troubles. Dev, you can ignore this. Yeah, let's just, um, let's just host that on here. There's no reason not to, is there? All right, is this working now? So let's add also release counts. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Oops. So we're going to need some more SQR for that.
Let's just test this in, a, in an SQLite first. No, no such thing as releases. Is it not? What's going on here? Oh no. Okay, let's try again. Ah, I haven't opened anything. That was stupid of me. Okay, that looks good. So let's run the code gen again to make that um, query available. When did you leave your job just to focus on Gleam? Was the decision easy? I've left my job to work on Gleam quite a lot of times. Um, traditionally, I would leave my job and very large vehicle going past my flat. I wish they wouldn't drive heavy goods vehicles down this like residential road. Um, you release count per day. Oh, oh, that's so annoying. Okay, so this is the problem with doing code gen the way that I've done it is that you can't um gotta do this. If your code isn't type check, then you can't run the I've done it, haven't I? If your code doesn't type check, you can't run the um code gen. Which is rubbish. Nice. What am I doing now? For unknown food, new package camp per day. Have I done something silly? It's right there. Oh no, 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 I'm a fool. I forgot on, um, I gotta make this. There we go. Nice. What is that weird file system window? Um, this is mini, mini files, I think. I like it because you can, it's like a tree view, but you can also edit the files in here. So I could rename this to like Wibble. That would actually edit the file system. Yes, I don't want to add it. Um, okay, so let's check that this works. Then let's move the JavaScript off of a CDN. CDNs are rubbish. Um, have you tried DadBod NVIM? That sounds hilarious. I've not tried it. I've no idea what it is. Let's find out. DadBod NVIM. Oh, oh, it's, it's Monsieur Pope. I'm always slightly suspicious when I see something that's in Vim script rather than Lua these days. Come on, someone sell it on me. What do I, how does it? Mm. Yeah. I kind of be editing a buffer though, rather than be editing like inline like this. Tim Pope is, is the dude, yeah. He's, he's probably the singular person I would trust with um, Vimscript. But even then, like, come on, do something better. <laughs> All Vim people, eh? Any of Vim's really taking the, taking the thunder. You do edit, you do SQL editing buffers. Okay, that sounds good then. I'm, I'm, I'm now interested. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to learn how you install plugins again. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was um, 
looking at charm. Uh, good. <laughs> That's not what I wanted it to do. That's not what I wanted it to do at all. Where did my, where did my charts go? Can't find variable plotly. Oh no, I've broken everything. Uh, oh, it's because the script should come before the, um, the HTML. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? And, oops. Oh, and I didn't even include the second one anyway, so, like, what a fool I am. Try again. Oh yeah, we're talking about me leaving my job. So I I leave my job. I used to leave my job all the time um, because startups. You know, you, every time you leave your job, you can get a pay rise. So you should probably leave your job every year, unless it's a really good job. I did once have a really good job. Actually, I've had quite a few really good jobs, but um, yeah, that that one that they got bought by the main competitor and just crushed, and so. 95% of the staff left in over the course of three months. That was quite exciting. Anyway, so then I would like do a stint of Gleam and then I'd run out of money and then I would find a job in a slight panic and then I'd work there for a while and then loop again. But on not the previous December, but the pre December before that, I was getting enough money from GitHub sponsors, largely thanks to Fly. Thank you, Fly. Everyone give them money. Um... But I could then do it full time, which was really exciting. No DOM element with ID chart exists on the page. Ah, yes. Did I not actually say what the the ID was going to be? It seems extremely likely I did not do that. Um. So yeah, then December. So when was that? It's like fourth. No, fifteen months ago. I've been going full time on Gleam, which has been really cool. It's amazing how much more money, more money? No, I make way less money. It's amazing how much more um, you can get done if you don't have two jobs. That's not amazing. <laughs> you get about as much more done as you expect if you don't have to do something full time. Uh, so let's say the ID is... Did I just see a Q sharp there? I don't know what a Q, what's a Q sharp? Does Fly help outside of sponsorship? No. They are they just they um support us, but just leave us to it really, which is cool. Well, no, they give us a shout out on the website. That's really cool as well. But they're not involved in development. Hey, oh, wow, well, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Look at that. So the package count is pretty, oh, I'm in the way again. See the top, you're gonna see, you just see. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, cool. So the, uh, the package count has this nice increase to it. But the release count's much more stable. Like the, the, well, it's less curvy. That's interesting. Look at that. 16,000 releases. That's really cool. No, not 16,000. 1,600. That's a much smaller number. <laughs> uh, no, 16,000 is way too many. That's really cool. Look at that. I'm very happy with that. No, I'm not doing a log logarithmic scale. Logarith logarithms for smart people. Not me. I just want to feel good. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've moved the wrong window. Oh. Oh, how do I click on myself? There we go. 
maybe combine the two graphs, then I won't see them quite so well. I want to be able to see the like. I want to see all the curve of um of this. I think it's really nice. Are you not on Twitch? Um, no, but I should be. I really should be on Twitch. I just haven't worked out to do it yet. Uh, let's land some. Let's let's reply to some comments that I didn't reply to in time. Would you consider being an employee of Fly? Um, yes. Like if they could offer me something that I, that, that, yeah, I would. I would, but um, I'd have to be really careful to. Um, I'd have to be really careful about the relationship between fl any any company and Gleam. I don't want to be in a position where I mean I, I already am. I'm in a position where f I do quite need Fly still, but I'd really like to be in a position where Fly is just one of the many organisations who are supporting Gleam. So if something should happen to one of these organisations, like um, you know. Um, this consultancy is supporting us, but then the market goes bad, they lose a client, so they can't support us anymore. I don't want that to be a huge problem for Glim. And I don't want it to be such that, oh, well, this consultancy really wants, you know, um, they're using, uh, I don't know, some technology like gRPC. It's really important to them, so they're pushing really hard to have all this gRPC stuff. Um... Because you know, then there's there's a lot of pressure on the core team to do particular things to meet to make this this business happy. So ideally, it's going to be independent of any particular organization. I'd rather have a lot a, a good number of organizations making a small contribution than having a small number of organizations making a large contribution. Even even if it ended up being slightly less money overall, I think the security and sustainability for the project would be would be much better that way. It's a tricky one. <clears throat> and I think the thing that would make it would really um, enable a lot more to happen in the Gleam world is if we can start funding, start paying for um, core development other than just me. So like if we could pay for like myself and, and some other developers, that would enable us to do a lot more um, rather than relying on people's free time all the time. And if I was employed by Fly, how would I do that? Like, ideally, the um, so I own I own a company which I used when I was a consultant. So the ideal would be that money comes into the company, and then I would either employ or subcontract the the other members of the core team to work on the compiler as well, and the ecosystem, you know, what have you, anything that's going to be good for Gleam. Are we missing anything in Gleam by not having something like type classes, traits, interfaces? Um, yeah, like you're missing that whole style of programming. But the whole point of Gleam is that you are, you're doing a very simple and, con and concise and, and pragmatic style of programming. Programming with interfaces is really cool. Programming without interfaces is also really cool. You know, pick what you want to do and do it well. Chris working at Fly on production issues live, in, in live view is one of the best things that could have happened. They've added things that he previously said weren't necessary or a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Um, you end up finding actual legit pain points. It is super important that you spend as much time being a user of the things that you make as possible, which is why is part of why I do these streams. And, and well, no, I've always been very conscious to make sure I write as much Gleam code as I can because... I remember this quote from um, Matt, the Ruby guy. He says, I'm not a Ruby programmer, I'm a C programmer. It's like, oh yeah, like you will spend so long working on the thing that makes the, the language that you won't actually use the language. And I wanna make sure that I'm using as much Gleam as possible so I understand the situation. I think we've also got a slight strength in that we're not doing things that are so outlandish. Like Live View is very much new, new territory. Like it's an unusual technology. There isn't much to look at and draw inspiration from. While Gleam is much more an amalgamation of lots of existing things. So we can take lessons.
I think an employing state, um, status helps it solve real world problems and stay in touch with it. Um, maybe, so long as I'm not solving real world problems as my um, running a company, which I think I am at the moment. Is the reason why let um, x function, while uh, locally defined anonymous functions cannot be recursive? Um, yeah, because it's simpler this way, I think. Uh, you know, one isn't one isn't necessarily better than the other, but I do think that non-recursive is simpler. Trying to um, any plans to support monorepos or locally isolated packages? You can do both of those things already with path dependencies. Um, I want to make some significantly better tooling for monorepos, but uh, it's not quite time yet because we don't have anyone who's big enough for it to really warrant the optimizations. I want to be able to replicate the kind of experience that you get in large companies where you have loads of packages, but there's only one build cache shared between all of them. So it, compilation is already really fast, but I want to be even faster. That's the way to go. So like big, big monorepo stuff. Is it possible to get government funds? Great question. I've not researched that. Um, at my previous workplace, we got R&D um, tax credits. It might have been tax credits. Don't think it was a grant. I think it was tax credits. Um, I, it might be tricky to... I don't know. Then, yeah, it might be worth doing some applications. I'm not sure yet. Um, if it's tax credits, though... There's not really much point because we don't really, I don't have any, I don't have enough money to have employees or subcontractors. So there's nothing for me to be saving money on tax wise. Also, I would prob, I think all of my subcontractors and employees would probably be not based in the UK, which means I don't think we would be, they would be charging me sales tax, which I, again, which I think makes um, tax credits kind of pointless. How much Glean versus Rust have you been writing lately? I've been writing more... I've been writing lots of neither lately. I've been mostly um, reviewing pull requests, answering issues, talking to people um, lately. Since see, v V1's been very person-y, very chatty. In some provinces in Canada, they cover the salary of an employee up to 80k for doing innovative tech stuff. Canada's got some really amazing... Um, stuff trying to support um um like technology i think especially in montreal that's why every game studio in the world is based over there because it's it, by the time all the tax breaks come in and all the all the grants and support and stuff it just becomes extremely cheap what's the situation with a REPL that understands gleam code um yeah it would be nice to have a REPL, but um REPL will be lovely, but it's not super high priority, so I'm not working on it. People keep talking about it, and then it never really goes anywhere. There's lots of really, like, it's a thing that would, be, would definitely be nice, but has lots of very complicated, um, like, questions that need to be answered. Such so that even though it is valuable, like, the cost probably, like, makes it not very advantageous to do it now. Yeah, we left the EU over here in the UK, so we're we're a bit stuck. So people who use um, REPLs a lot, I'm very familiar with lots of Elixir programmers who use REPLs all the time, and Ruby programmers and Clojure programmers and other Lisp programmers. I don't, I've not met anyone who talks about using statically typed functional programming languages in a REPL a lot. Like Julia, also also not statically typed. Like I'm just wondering, like, is there a is there a function is there a statically typed functional programming language that has a REPL that provides a really good experience? Because I really I'd like to I'd like to check that out and see what that's like. Yeah, Haskell's got a decent one, but I don't know. I don't. I've never heard anyone be like, "Oh, Haskell's great. I spend all day using the REPL." Like no one's ever said that to me. I know they've got a good REPL, but like it's not. Do people make it their workflow? 
Oh, cam oh, camel utop. Yeah, that's a good point. I've heard people say it's good. I don't. I've never heard anyone like say that they work entirely within it though. Yeah, I only see people use it when they're learning. Yeah, exactly. Some people sort of just do all of their programming interactively. Like it's a really nice model. Um, like the Lisps do do it super well. Scala has a REPL. I remember it being kind of a pain to work with. Uh, I have seen Unison. I've not tried it, though. Anyway, look at that. We did a bunch of stuff. Wasn't that exciting? Does this all look sensible? I think it does. <laughs> Bristol kind of has a REPL, but it's slow as hell. Yeah, that's it. I don't. I don't want to. I also don't want to make a REPL and everyone be like, "Oh, it's not very good." I don't want to just. You know, I don't want to like deliver a half baked thing. I'm also not really much of a REPL user, so that also really, you know, doesn't motivate me to. I maybe it is more valuable than I understand, but. At the moment, I feel like editor tooling and stuff and web frameworks and things like that are going to be more valuable. Um, wait, I did I run the tests? Yay. The beam is dope. The beam is so cool. That's the other thing. Like, I think a huge part of the value of the beam, like shell experience, is about doing all this like dynamically manipulating stuff to like do debugging and things. And I'm just not convinced that, like, it's much closer to like scripting. You know, it's like in interacting with. I I kind of want like a. I would be happy in a beam environment using like a, like a shell scripting language. Like doing it all with like JQ or something rather than using a big fancy pants static um, language. Are you rocking fish shell? Yes, I am. Fish shell is awesome. You talk about Gleam being a collection of stuff and, uh, and simplicity of other languages that you like. Does Gleam have something that is Gleam exclusive and its use? And oh, sorry. And is it use? Um, so sort of. So use we did make independently. And then after we introduced it, we discovered that Rock and Coca both have um, almost exactly the same thing. The Rock's one is limited to a callback that takes one argument, I think. And I think, although they might be removing it, I'm not sure. And I'm not sure how Coca compares. Do you have any cool examples of phantom data in Gleam production code? No, I do not. Haley will though. A camel's let star is quite different to. Well, it's not. It's not. It's it's it is different to. Um, is it? No, yeah, it is different because you, 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 it's less um, expressive because you can't, um, well, you can. You could like rebind, you could keep rebinding it. Can you shadow in OCaml? I can't remember. Can I have a block and then keep changing which function, which operator is being used for let star? I'm not sure you can. Because in, in Gleam, we, like, we commonly mix up, mix up different ones. So in OCaml, it generally is like star is monad and plus is applicative. Um, but we don't have that in Gleam because it's like you just pick every single time and we're not going to like pound it to any particular um, design pattern. What does Beam actually look like? Is it an assembler like primitive? I'm not sure what the question is. Uh, it's a, a, The Beam is a, a virtual machine that has a bytes code. 
Um, uh, what do you use for watching and restarting Gleam server? You recall you use something W. I use watch exec. There is a, th I think there's an issue in watch exec or like we're doing something funny where um, you need to specify what signal to send it to terminate it. If you want to terminate a, a running server, I mostly use it for running tests. I don't do enough front end work to, to really think much about um, like restarting it is fine for me because I just don't do it very often. But yeah, I think there's some issue on GitHub about watch exec. I hear the other ones work a bit better for like particularly restarting a running server, like en enter, enter. Anyway, look, we've deployed. Let's see. Let's go. Let's go somewhere. Uh, do 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 do. It's not gonna be very impressive if I go from it to itself. Um, packages. Oh, look, it's still up. It hasn't crashed. That's very exciting. What did we call it? Inter internet points. Yay! There we go. That's so cool. Yeah, this is awesome. Cool. There you go. That's not at all what I planned to do today. Um, but I'm I'm actually, I'm quite happy with it. How long have we been doing this now? How do I see the, how do I see the length of time? Oh my gosh. I've been streaming for ages. Wow, okay, I'm going to go I'm going to stop. <laughs> Uh, all right. Bye, folks. Thanks for coming. Have a lovely time. Bye. <laughs> uh, ah, I've actually worked out what the stop button is now, so.